What's up guys, this is Dr. Antonio Webb here, Orthopedic Spine Surgery Fellow. In this video, as well as the next series of videos, we're going to be talking about how to suture like a surgeon. The first video, we went over the basics of the different types of sutures, the different types of surgical knots, as well as how to remain calm and how to act in the operating room. In this video today, we're going to go over vertical mattress as well as horizontal mattress sutures. Thank you to the sponsors over at Artasia for sending over the suturing kit. Make sure you check them out. Their link is in the description. Okay, so we have our needle driver here. We have our Atsen pickup, our scissors, as well as our suture. The good thing about this suturing pad is that it can be used over and over again. Say for instance, you're a medical student or you're pre-med and you wanna practice suturing for let's say the next six months. Good thing about this suturing pad is that the sutures that I threw earlier can be removed like this and you can throw another suture there. So it's not like the suture is messing up the suturing pad. This can be used over multiple times, how many times that you want. So we have our AdSense pickup, we have our needle driver, we're gonna take out our suture we talked about the different types of sutures in the first video. This is a nylon, non-absorbable suture, a 4-0 nylon, fairly decent size. The non-absorbable portion means that um, the body does not break it down. We usually use this type of suture on the skin, so these sutures have to be taken out. Just be careful when you're opening up the package here. The needle is pretty sharp. You want to grab your needle driver. We talked about this in the first video as well. When you're opening and closing the needle driver, you want to make sure that you don't waste or time or steps. So when I open a needle driver, I'm opening it with my palm, just like this here. Some people start off in a pretty habit that a lot of students get into is to use the circle, the thumb in the circle to open and close. The problem with this is when you're in surgery and you have to pass this off to another surgeon or to the surgical tech, it takes another step to take this out and then pass it off. But if your needle driver is in your palm, you can just hand it off a lot more quicker and more efficiently. In surgery, it's all about saving steps as well as being efficient with your time. So we have our needle driver, we have this suture here. When you grab this suture, you want to grab it two thirds of the way back. You don't wanna grab it close to the edge of the sharp part. You don't wanna grab it too far back because when you throw your suture, that's gonna affect how much of the soft tissue that you can grab. So I usually like it about two thirds of the way back and I like it to angle that way, just a tad bit. Use your AdSense, they have teeth on the end of these here to grab the skin edge. You don't want to grab the skin edge too aggressively, like this here, like this, this. That can be very traumatizing to the skin. I usually use one portion of the teeth here to kind of just lift up the edge of the skin and then we're going to place the needle a couple millimeters away. Mnemonic that we use uh, for this is called far, far, near, near. We're gonna do a vertical mattress first. So you wanna grab your suture, follow the course of the needle. It's curved like this, not straight up and down. You wanna pull it through. And I notice a lot of students when they first start off suturing, they tend to leave this portion here really long. That wastes a lot of sutures. Your other hand is way up here. You wanna be mindful of your space, making sure you're not contaminating yourself or others in surgery. So just leave a few centimeters there and place your needle driver in between these two edges here, the shorter edge, the longer edge of the suture. So right in the middle, and then we're gonna throw it around the needle driver twice. Once, twice, we'll do that again. Once, twice. So after we throw the vertical mattress, that's what we're gonna do. 
You want to grab your needle again, and this time we're going to go near. So this one's far, far. You want to go closer to the wound edge, so a little closer to the laceration or the wound bed. And we're going to take it in one bite, and there. So this is a vertical mattress. We use this when we want to decrease tension on the wound edges, such as a large wound in a trauma situation, or if the patient has a really large wound and you're having trouble, such as this wound here, getting the edges to come back over again. Just as we talked about the needle driver in the middle, you wanna wrap it twice, grab the small edge, and then pull it through. Usually I switch my hands when I'm doing that. So I started off over here, my right hand goes the opposite direction. The second time when you're throwing this, you just have to do it once. You don't have to do it twice. Grab the edge of that and then pull it through, switch your hands. When you're trying to lock this surgical knot, this knot is not locked yet, you want to throw it the opposite direction. The first time was here, when you lock it, you want to be here and then wrap it around once, grab the edge of that and pull it through. So that essentially locks the, the surgical uh, knot. Depending on the suture that you're using, some sutures require surgical knots that four or five knots, other sutures you can get away with two or three kind of throws. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to throw another one right in the middle, wrap it around twice, grab the edge, switch your hands, and lay it down. Right in the middle once, hands go the opposite direction. You see that loop there? And to lock this just the opposite way, move your hands the opposite direction. When you're cutting this suture, it's important to not cut it too short because your knot will be waste it. The knot can pull away from the skin and you don't want it too long. You're wasting suture. So I usually just cut it maybe a centimeter or two from the uh, skin edge. So that is a vertical mattress. We're going to throw a horizontal mattress. It's pretty similar to the vertical. We use it to evert skin edges when the wound is, has a lot of tension, such as a large gap between the wound here. Usually we throw multiple layers, a couple deep layers, and this will be on the skin for the superficial layer. For this suture here, a couple millimeters away from the skin, we're going to take it in two bites, pull that all the way through so you're not wasting suture. Be mindful that you don't hit someone when you're moving the suture around. A couple millimeters away. Uh, the other side of the uh, wound, same distance apart, and pull that through. And unlike the vertical mattress, the horizontal mattress, um, we're going to regroup the needle on the needle driver, and we're going to go just adjacent to your last suture location that you came out of. So we came out here, you want to move a little bit distal, a couple millimeters, and come out this direction here. Grab your needle, and then do the same, take the same distance from the skin edge, and the same depth, so that your wound edges approximate. You can see that's coming together really nicely compared to how much space you have between there. And that's the advantage of a horizontal or a vertical mattress. So we're gonna put our needle driver just like in a simple interrupted suture in between the two, wrap it around twice. We're gonna pull that and lay it down. And sometimes this doesn't like to lay down, lay it down there. Do it again once, switch your hands. And then this third one here, this is when you're going to lock the uh, suture around and then lock it. We'll throw a couple more right in the middle, twice. Once, switch your hands 
and then the opposite direction. Try that again. And that is a vertical as well as a horizontal mattress. Couple other tips when handling your needle, you wanna make sure that you protect it like this here. So when you hand this back to the surgical tech, the needle is protected and it doesn't stab anyone or poke anyone. So you never want to hand back the needle to your surgical tech or to another person like this here. You always want to protect that needle. Be careful just touching the edge of the needle. You can get poked. Protect your needle. Whenever I hand this back to the surgical tech, I always let them know, hey, there's a needle that's on the table. You communicate with the surgical team, the rest of the surgeons, the, the surgical assists, that there's a needle that is um, on the surgical table. So I wanted to thank the sponsors of this video over at Artasia and SutureKit.com for sponsoring this video. In the description, there's a few discount codes for you guys. So that kind of concludes this video. This is a series of four videos on how to suture like a surgeon. I hope you guys learned something and we'll see you in the next one.